Russia has violated the sovereignty and territorial integrity of an independent European nation, Ukraine, and engaged in provocative behavior toward NATO allies. Crimeans voted overwhelmingly on Sunday to break away from Ukraine and join Russia in a referendum the West condemned as illegal. With half the ballots counted, 95.5% of Crimea residents voted to break away from Ukraine. We're moving forward with the most significant reinforcement of our collective defense any time since the Cold War. The tangible sign of rising tensions between the West and Russia. Hundreds of U.S. armored vehicles have been arriving in Latvia with thousands of troops to follow. First, we're strengthening NATO's defense and deterrence posture, building on our European reassurance initiative, which has already increased readiness from the Baltics to the Black Sea. Our alliance will enhance our forward presence on our eastern flank. As I announced yesterday, the United States will be the lead nation here in Poland, deploying a battalion of American soldiers. The United Kingdom will take the lead in Estonia, Germany and Lithuania, and Canada in Latvia. This will mean some 4,000 additional NATO troops on a rotational basis in this region. Moreover, the additional U.S. Armored Brigade will rotate through Europe, uh, include, uh, including an additional 4,000 U.S. troops. Meanwhile, to the south, we agreed on new deterrence measures in Romania and Bulgaria. So NATO is sending a clear message that we will defend every ally. Russia is not willing to be subservient to the U.S. Vatican version of the New World Order. Mikhail Gorbachev said the world has never been closer to nuclear war than it is at present. After President Obama made his speech, leaders within the European Union stated that Obama and NATO were making Europe less secure. Francois Hollande said we don't need the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. NATO doesn't get to decide Europe's Russia relations. The leaders of the two major German political parties, both the Social Democrats and the Christian Democratic Party, said that NATO was warmongering. William Perry, the former head of the Pentagon in the mid-90s, said that NATO was threatening and trying to provoke atomic war in Europe. One of Russia's leading strategists said NATO wants to move bombers and atomic weapons right up to the border of Russia. And if NATO launches a nuclear strike, we only have a few seconds to retaliate. The last bastions of defiance for US-style global government are Russia, Iran, China, the Assad regime and the Hezbollah faction. China, being the most resilient because of the elite's needs, keeping manufacturing in China so companies like Walmart and Amazon can make mega profits, as well as China buying US government debt. So the China-United States relationship is a complex and symbiotic one. Russia is dependent on oil sales, which make up 68% of exports, so sanctions on oil hit the Russian economy hard. George Soros has stated that Russia has only around two years of gold reserves, and when the gold runs out, that could potentially wreak havoc on Russia. The United States, Canada and the United Kingdom have sent troops to Eastern European nations bordering Russia, as well as a large stockpile of military vehicles. Seemingly, 
The US NATO strategy was to deceive Russia into building a large contingent of ground forces to defend its borders at a huge cost to its already struggling economy with potentially crippling consequences. It is important to note that no nation in the world at this present time has a land army that could successfully invade another country because of the massive cost. However, Putin has been too clever to fall into that trap, but insists on the right to use nuclear weapons if attacked. Since NATO's plan has not worked, it is likely the US NATO forces will create an incident on the Estonian-Russia border to draw Russia into a local conflict with minimal threat to Western Europe or the United States, similar to the 2008 George Bush proxy war in Georgia that Russia crushed very quickly. Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia and Slovenia are members of NATO, with Serbia possibly to join. There have been reports that NATO has been pressuring those nations bordering Russia with threats such as economic and membership penalties imposed by the EU. Serbia is the latest nation to be bullied into joining NATO. Former NATO commander Philip Breedlove has been labelled a warmonger and has had to defend himself over leaked emails that showed him plotting to push President Obama to escalate tensions with Russia, revealed by hackers who broke into his email account and exposed Breedlove's plot to start World War III. The secretive Bilderberg group that is also connected to NATO has pushed for Hillary Clinton to be the next president. Hillary Clinton has made comments in the past that she is willing to use nuclear weapons on Iran and has been described and attributed with a willingness to go to war that even surpasses the most aggressive neoconservative. There is also a COVID religious war going on that is not at all publicised due to the mainstream media press focusing on national governments and organisations like NATO. G20, there were smiles and handshakes, but little mincing of words. At a private meeting, Canada's Stephen Harper told Mr. Putin, I guess I'll shake your hand, but I have only one thing to say to you, you need to get out of Ukraine. In his remarks Sunday, President Obama offered Mr. Putin a way back to better relations. My communications to him was no different than what I've said publicly, as well as what I've said to him privately over the course of this crisis in Ukraine. Uh, and that is, Russia has the opportunity to take a different path. While other leaders remained in Brisbane until after lunch Sunday, Mr. Putin was among the first to leave the gathering. Both the United States and the Vatican were historic enemies of Russia while it was the Soviet Union and are still enemies today. The East-West Schism of the Russian Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church occurred in 1054. And since that time, both churches have been bitter opponents. In the early years of the Orthodox Catholic dispute, both the Pope of the Catholic Church and the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church were calling each other the Antichrist. Maybe they both were right. 
The US-Vatican alliance helped bring down the Berlin Wall, which in turn further weakened the Soviet Union until its collapse in 1991. The US papal diplomatic relations were not only forged by the Roman Catholic infiltration of government agencies, but in familiarity when working together in a common goal to check the advance of communism, which is opposed to capitalism and religion. The US has not always had diplomatic relations with the Vatican because of opposing ideologies. The Vatican is historically totalitarian and is opposed to religious liberty. However, on January the 10th, 1984, the Vatican has achieved diplomatic relations with the United States. The contest between the Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church has travelled those very same countries that the US-NATO coalition is sniping off one by one. There were tensions in Ukraine over the loyalty of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church who were loyal to Russia. And there are also tensions in other countries, like Estonia and Serbia, who are of the Orthodox faith. Serbia is deeply divided because of the carrots and sticks approach of the EU dangling the reward of EU membership if Serbia joins NATO. Serbia is a staunch Eastern Orthodox state that has historical and present-day diplomatic relations with Russia. The annexation of Crimea is another controversy with the Crimean population voting to be annexed by Russia, the majority of civilians in Crimea of the Russian Orthodox faith.